I'm Mark Chris Williams, I'm standing out in front of Madhouse Comedy Club in San Diego, California. Welcome to the first stand-up comedy VR special. Welcome to Mark Christopher Lawrence's virtual reality comedy special. For the best immersive experience, please watch this in your favorite VR headset. Now sit back, relax, and prepare yourself for a good laugh. shooting. So I'm glad to be here tonight. I've been traveling a lot. I was just in Napa Valley, California. And I'll tell you right now, folks, uh, Napa is a fun place. You know, you walk in, you check into the hotel, they give you a glass of wine. And, and then you're drunk the whole time you're there. Uh, I have a friend that owns a winery up in Napa, and he was having a, a, a tasting for some of his close friends. And uh, they were opening $10,000 bottles of wine. Is that crazy? Yeah. I'm like, dude, for ten thousand dollars, I gotta be able to drive it. I can't be drinking ten thousand dollars. Know, let me say this before we get too far into this. Uh, my comedy style is storytelling. I, I'm gonna tell you some stories while I'm up here tonight, and uh, all the stories I tell you tonight are true. Now, some of them I've embellished a little bit to make them a little funnier, but they're all true. For example, back in September, uh, I was doing a show in La Jolla charity event. There are four of the comics on the show. 13 minutes into my set, I'm closing the show out. 13 minutes in, the host comes up and says, I I'm sorry, Mark, and he takes the mic. And then he says, is there a doctor in the house? What had happened was, some guy sitting about six rows back was laughing so hard, he keeled over and knocked. I'm trying not to be proud that I killed a dude with a joke. <laughs> but there's a whole lot of ego that comes with killing a dude with a joke. <laughs> now, now, luckily for him, there were four doctors in the house that night. They went to work on the guy. They were able to resuscitate him. He woke up giggling. <laughs> about it on my way home, I was like, well, 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 well what, have, what have, would have happened if the police would have shown up? <laughs> I'm the only brother in the room. Have <laughs> the police come in and say, who killed him? <laughs> Every aisle. <laughs> so now I got to share that cell with Bubba, and Bubba's giving me that look. <laughs> what you in for? Sweetness. I killed a dude, Bubba. With a joke. Knock, knock, Bubba. <laughs> I'm glad to be here, man. I've been traveling a lot. I tell you, I've been spending a lot of time down south. And I tell you, folks, the south is alive and backwards. <laughs> I was in Missouri. Missouri is pawning themselves off as being Midwest. It's the South. They had me fooled, though. They flew me into Kansas City. Now, Kansas City is a metropolis. Lots of nightlife, arts and culture, great restaurants, a lot of fine people just like you have here in San Diego tonight. But they picked me up at the airport, drove me two and a half hours into the woods. There was black people there and didn't even know they were free. the south right here, that's what we got in there. They were going, don't, don't you tell no jokes about NASA. Come on out of there, Kunta, you're free. Bring Kizzy with you. Small little town in Missouri, Sedalia, Missouri, three teeth in the whole town. The mayor had him on his bracelet. First thing I don't say, I said, what's all the black folks at? Somebody said, on stage. I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. I said, I'm glad to be here in Missouri. Somebody said, we say Missouri. I said, you say it wrong. Apparently not as smart as you 
my friends over in Mississippi. <laughs> and said, Bookmobile doesn't get to Missouri that often. <laughs> Suffice it to say that Missouri is home of the big girl. They fancy the biscuits. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, I believe that there is someone for everybody, and I'm telling you right now, guys, if you are a chubby chaser, if you like them fluffy, Missouri might be the spot for you. You can get yourself a sack of biscuits and hang out at the park. They'll follow you to your car like pigeons. I realize I'm a big guy, I was a little guy in Missouri. Coming up to me going, how you doing, little man? <laughs> uh, pretty good, ma'am. Nice tooth. <laughs> I ate terribly in Missouri. Everything was fried. You ever go somewhere to eat, no matter what you order, they put something fried on your plate, whether you order it or not? Fried bread, fried tomatoes, fried pickles. I ate so much grease in Missouri, now I drink a glass of water, it beads up in my throat. <laughs> I did find one thing fried that I loved, fried candy bars. Somebody took a candy bar, wrapped that in cinnamon roll dough, and chucked it in the fryer. Who was I to say no? When I talked about that fourth or fifth one, my heart started double clutching. I'm down on one knee at the fair, sweating butter. People were coming up, not even trying to help me. They're dabbing their biscuits on my forehead. <laughs> hey, there's a bar found over here. <laughs> Bring grandma. <laughs> so now I'm trying to get myself together, trying to get back down to my fighting way, you know? I don't want to lose too much weight, though. I don't want to be that dude at your job. You know that dude lost like a hundred pounds. He brags about it every day, he's so annoying. You, you, you know I lost over a hundred pounds. I lost over half my body weight. But he still has that big jack-in-the-box head. And dude, you lost too much. You have a hard time finding hats. I don't wanna be that good. I don't wanna lose my love handles either. You know you can squeeze love out of your love handle? You ever get cut off on the freeway, makes you want to cut. Mom! <laughs> Jesus loves you! And your fancy lane change. You can't do that when you're skinny. You got nothing to squeeze onto. You got to stick your finger in your belly button. And you spend the rest of the day trying not to smell it. Here, <laughs> I'm trying to get myself together. My doctor says I need to get on a diet. I can't do it. Anybody on a diet? Okay, okay. I'm like one day old, two, three, four days off. If at first you don't succeed, I'm gonna fry a candy bar. Hope for the best. That's my motto. There's too many diets out there, right? Hey, hey, I mean, how do you know which diet is the best diet for you? You got the Zone, the Atkins, the Scarsdale. Hollywood 24-hour diet's supposed to be a good one. Comes with a plastic surgeon. <laughs> but right now, I'm on the Clydesdale diet. Mostly consists of hay. Hey, give me some of this. Hey, how about some of that? Hey, you gonna eat that? They say in order for you to maximize the potential of your diet, you gotta work out. So I started working out at a new gym. You might have heard of it, Curves. <laughs> and that's a good gym right there. First day, they give you a personal trainer. She stood me from the full length mirror. She says, Mark, we're gonna identify your trouble spots. I see it every day. It's all trouble. I said, if you really want to identify my trouble spots, shouldn't we be looking in my refrigerator? That's where the trouble starts. <laughs> she told me she was going to introduce me to muscle confusion. 
You ever hear that? I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna introduce you to muscles. I hadn't worked out in two years when I started working out at the curves. I said, my muscles are confused because I'm here. They're going, where's the couch? And she's a great trainer, I'll tell you right now, a great trainer, best trainer I've ever had. I played sports all my life from the time I was a little kid throughout college. This is how good this trainer is over at the curves. First six weeks, my chest went from an A to a C cup. I figured I'd get to a D cup, it's gonna be hard to get out of the house. That's why God gave men pecs and not breasts. We wouldn't get nothing done. We'd be in the mirror all day, every day. from over there and put them on this side of the bar. I'm gonna put 445s on this side of the bar. We're gonna bench press like a man. <laughs> right here in the curves. <laughs> so we loaded the bar up at that arcade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? the gym with and all the weights. You can't go home, you got your car up there. <laughs> I get down on the bench, get ready to start bench pressing. And when you start bench pressing, you can't put your hands just really nearly anywhere on the bar. Am I right, guy? Now make sure your hands are symmetrical, right? Yeah.
particular day, I'd, I'd worked out hard at the curves, I go home, I get all snowmaned up. I turn and let the water hit me in the face like I've done so many times before without incident. And all of a sudden, shoo, I was airborne. Let me tell you something, you're 250 some odd pounds and you are suddenly four feet off the ground floating out of the shower. That's a frightening situation. I needed some clarity, I needed it now. I thought I was okay. I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of beat, kind of like a water wiggle if you can picture that. I thought I was dead. I didn't know he could talk. Enjoy the rest of the show, folks. My name is Marcus Chaparro. 